complex at Mahan Field for tonight's District 5 championship game between Ashland Post 77 and Lowell Post 87. Tonight's winner will advance to the state tournament on Saturday at Fino Field in Milford. We will now introduce both teams beginning with Lowell. First, the substitutes, number nine, Chris Ward. Number 32, Brian Big Cat Callery. Number 22, Brock Pear. Number 15, JJ Mercury. Number six, Jamie Velez. Number 11, Brendan DeMarco. And number 10, Matt Draper. And now for their starting lineup, led by their manager, Kyle Gaff, assistant coach, Nick Ryan. Leading off, playing center field, number three, Edgar Velasquez. The first baseman, number 23, Thomas Hassett. The shortstop, number one, Ray Velasquez. The left fielder, number 29, Zach Gitchier. The catcher, number 33, Kyle DeRoma. Playing third, number 12, Tyler Hoey. The designated hitter, number seven, Johnny Donovan. The right fielder, number five, Aiden Foyle. And the second baseman, number two, Luke Silva. Ladies and gentlemen, Lowell Post 87. And now for your home team, Ashland Post 77. First for the reserves, number one, Andrew Sternick. Number three, Louis Dennison. Number eight, Ben Fink. Number 27, Lawrence Tain. Number 26, Kevin Balowitz. Number 12, Matt Tomaselli. And number 11, Owen Ward. And for the starting lineup, led by their head coach, manager, Jake Obed, assistant coaches, Dylan O'Leary, Andrew Kine, Sean Babineau, and Mike Messier. Leading off and playing left field is number 13, Sam Farrell. The center fielder, number 14, Brendan Grover. Batting third and playing shortstop is number five, Jackson Hornon. Batting cleanup and playing third is number 22, Dom Cavanaugh. The catcher bats fifth, number 15, Sean Jewett. Batting sixth and playing second, number two, Cole Glassburn. Batting seventh and playing first, is number 34, Alex Almalfi. Batting eighth is the designated hitter, number four, Drew Rancatori. And batting ninth and playing right field is number 19, Nick Calabrese. Pitching tonight for post 77 is number 51, Luke Gustafson. Ladies and gentlemen, Ashland post 77. Your umpires tonight on the field is Mr. Bob Dwyer, and calling the balls and strikes is Mr. Glenn Cole. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you could remove your hats as we honor America and those who are currently defending our freedom with the playing of our national anthem. <laughs>
And there you have it, the national anthem. And we are just about ready for Ashland Legion Baseball as Ashland Post 77 takes on Natick Post 87. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, Steve Watson on the call. On camera, it's Cameron Tabo. And it all comes down to tonight. The winner of this game moves on to the States. Souvenir is here. Buy one for your girl. How many? Ooh, the vendors are busy. <laughs> they certainly are. All right, so without further ado, let's take a look at the visiting Lowell lineup. Starting things off is Edgar Velasquez, the center fielder, Thomas Hassett, the first baseman batting second. Ray Velasquez, the shortstop hitting third. Zach Gishier, the left fielder, hitting cleanup. Kyle DeRoma, the catcher, hitting fifth. Tyler Hoey, the third baseman, hitting sixth. Johnny Donovan, the DH, hitting seventh. Aiden Foyle, the right fielder, hitting eighth. Luke Silva, the second baseman, hitting ninth. And it's Luke Gustafson getting the start today for Ashland Post 77. With the rest of the Post 77 defense, here is Larry Sacklad. Oh, thanks, Tom. Sorry. Uh, Tom Kavanaugh's at third base tonight. Jackson Hornung is at shortstop. Cole Glassburn is at second base. Alex Amalfi patrolling first base tonight. Left to right, Sam Farrell, Brandon Grover, and Nick Calabrese. Sean Jewett behind the plate. Catching Luke Gustafson. This is the first start of the season that Luke Gustafson has made for post 77. He is double rostered this summer. He is out of Tufts University. Yes, he was a starter for them this past season and made a number of appearances on the mound over at Tufts. And he is set to go for this Zone 5 championship game against Lowell post 87. Some fun facts about Luke Gustafson. Did you know his pregame superstition is to tuck in his necklace? I, I did know that. You did? No. Right. And his uh, favorite professional athlete is Baker Mayfield. Boo. Well, we got to, you know, I guess the fans at home got to watch the relationship between Jewett and Gustafson. They uh, have not uh, had a lot of time together, just one inning. And. You know, when you catch somebody new, like he caught uh, Amalfi the other night. Right. You get crossed up, and it's a little bit different. That will certainly be something to watch for in this game tonight. And this Lowell team, they took down Ashland over at Hopkinton High School last night. A 3-2 to two win to force this elimination game here tonight. It was a pretty good back and forth battle yesterday at Hopkinton High School. And despite having runners on the corners with no outs, post 77, not able to play to run in the bottom of the seventh, and they fell to Lowell three to two. So here we are in the elimination game tonight as Edgar Velasquez steps in and takes ball one from Luke Gustafson. Should be a noisy Lowell dugout as usual. Line up and the pitch. Outside, two and oh. Well, I don't know when the last time Luke pitched is, uh, when Luke pitched for anybody, but it should be interesting to see how long it takes him to get his rhythm down. No, he last pitched against a team in Lexington. That's what he told me pregame is a strike. He's only thrown one inning for post 77 this year. And that was in relief in a situation where there was two runners in scoring position and no outs. And he was able to get out of the jam as this is a fair ball up the left side, picked up by Gustafson, throw to first, in time. One to three for out number one. What a stretch by Alex Amalfi. He used all of his leg. That was a great stretch by Amalfi there. Thomas Hassett will step in. The ever so dangerous Thomas Hassett. Good hitter, this kid. Brandon Grover shading his eyes in center field. That could be trouble for a while. First pitch is a ball. Yeah, the sun is certainly shining tonight here at Mahan Field. Temperature is in the low 80s. It'll dip down to as low as the high 60s throughout this game. 
Right now, the HCAM Weather Center is reading 73 degrees. Well, the Larry Sacklett Weather Center is reading. Seventy-eight degrees. Uh, you can hear the little chirping. Bench already chirping. Yeah. They are famously known for their chirping. Line up and the pitch. In there for a strike. Two and two is the count. This is his bread and butter, mixing up his speeds. He's a pro. Gustafson gets the sign he likes. He deals, and this is up the middle. Takes a couple hops on the infield grass. Fielded by Glassburn. Throw to first, and out number two. Amalfi just able to keep his foot on the bag. The throw pulled him a little bit away from the bag, but he kept that back foot on, Larry. Yeah, he, <laughs> he definitely did. Uh, Cole makes those routine plays look hard, and those hard plays look easy. Ray Velasquez steps in. For Lowell. There's trouble last night. A little bit upstairs there. One and oh. Steve, what do you think about Mahan Field? Solid field. Actually worked the game here last year. Tremendous facility. I don't know. And we, we've been talking about this week how I think this facility should host the States at some point. I would tend to agree. It has all the stuff on the checklist. It certainly does. Great press box as well. How about a win tonight for Ashland? That'll give it a nice pitch. Two and one is the count on Velasquez. Of course, the winner of this one moves on to the state tournament in Milford. It's there for the second time in three years. Right. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Lowell got the honor last year. year before that was post-77. This is it high in the air. Right side, and it's going to be dropped by Calabrese, just not able to get to it, and I think he might have lost it a bit in the sun. I agree. So a two-out single for Velasquez. Zach Gishier, the left fielder, will step in. I think he had that one just for a second, but lost it up top. Yeah, but the sun's 93 million miles away. Did you know that? I did not know that. And it came into play here at Mahan <laughs> Field. Who would have thunk it, Larry? No. Who would have thought that? Checking at first, runner back seat. Uh, beauty of having Luke out there is he's going to keep that run game in check. Checking at first, almost got him that time. He snapped throw. Have you seen Luke pitch? Steve? I have not. Until tonight. And a little bit outside there. A little slide step from Luke Gustafson. No high leg kick. Checking at first, runner back safe. It was a balk called last night, and we still don't know why. Outside. What block are you referring to? The block that was called on uh, in the first I, inning on Dom Cavanaugh, I believe. Wind up and the pitch outside there. Three and zero. Oh. Ball tailed outside badly. Gishier was zero for three yesterday. Gustafson looks at first and deals, and it's a four-pitch walk. Two on, two outs. The catcher, number 33, Kyle DeRoma. DeRoma steps in. 0 for 2 yesterday, was hit by a pitch. Yeah, he DH'd yesterday while Donovan caught, and uh, just swapped. Gossipson deals. There's a strike. You think the sun is affecting Gossipson a little bit? Yeah, I, I was just going to mention it looks like he's squinting a little bit. Maybe we can get a zoom of his face. Our Big lead cameraman. Over. Big lead over at second base, and Gossipson was taking his time, so the hitter calls time. 
We saw post 77 try to put on that inside move throw to second play yesterday. Not good at all. And that briefly got away from Jewett. Looked like a pretty good pitch, though. He actually, the middle infielders are doing nothing to keep runner at second close. And he turns towards second to get that runner back. If you didn't have that yeah. his face, I bet you The 1-1. One, one. That pitch slightly outside. Looks like Gustafson may be having a little bit of uh, trouble finding the strike zone. Yeah. I talked to him in the parking lot about being efficient with his pitches. He said he's going to try his best. There's a strike. Two and two. Brandon Grover is having a real difficult time in center field. He's got his glove shielding his eyes out there. Gossifson deals, and this is hit high in the air, left side, and ranging under it to make the catch is Sam Farrell for the third out of the inning. To the bottom of the first we go. We are scoreless on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. We are set for the bottom of the first inning. Let's take a look at the Ashland post 77 lineup. Pat Crowley on the hill for Lowell. The post 77 lineup is Sam Farrell will lead things off. He's playing left field tonight. Brandon Grover in center batting second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop hitting third. Dom Cavanaugh, the third baseman hitting cleanup. Sean Jewett, the catcher hitting fifth. Cole Glasper in the second baseman hitting sixth. Alex Amalfi, the first baseman hitting seventh. Drew Rancatori, the DH hitting eighth, and Nick Calabrese, the right fielder, hitting ninth for post 77, who comes into this game with a 16 and three record. And now with the whole defense here is Larry Sadler. Play third base tonight, Tyler Hoey, shortstop, Ray Velasquez. Second base, Luke Silva, Thomas Hassett. As usual at first base, Jack Glitcher and left. Edgar Velasquez in center. Aiden Foyle on right. Kyle DeRoma behind the plate, catching Pat Crowley. There you have it. The whole defense as Crowley is set to deal. Swing and a miss on the first pitch to Farrell. It looked like a home run swing. Yeah, last night he was swinging for the fences too. Crowley had some action last night. He pitched an inning or two. Leg lift and the pitch. Fouled into the backstop. Sam Farrell hitting a 156 on the season, but every time you look at that batting average, it just keeps going up. Well, Crowley didn't look like he had much in the hose last night, but they couldn't do anything. That 77 couldn't do anything with him. A little bit outside there, says the home plate umpire, Bob Dwyer. Steve, I understand you know. Uh, uh, Bob Dwyer is actually on the bases. Oh, okay. Well, the guy behind the plate then. <laughs> Swing and a miss, out number one. Yeah, and you two might remember it's the same umpire who was behind the plate for that game at Hudson. We all know what happened in that one. The one we felt very bad for. What happened there? Oh, I got a story oh, to tell you. I got a story. A story, but like a book. No, that one. It's a good, really, uh, it's a good one. You were away this weekend with the ponies. Brandon Grover steps in, gets a piece of this one, and that's going to drop into left center. Grover heading to first, and that's where he will stay. A one out single. And that'll bring up Jackson Hornum. But Tom, yes, to answer your question, yes, I do know Bob Dwyer. He actually taught the umpiring class back when I became an umpire in 2012. So ah. he's still doing it, too. Still the secretary treasurer of the CMBUA. He's doing a tremendous job from what I understand. Yeah, he's been at it for a long time. Jackson Hornung steps in, 476 on the season, 521 on base percentage. He had a double the lead off, uh, well he didn't lead off the game. Double last night, his first at bat. Really hard hit, one to left center field. How about these numbers, 17 runs driven in, 18 scored. 
1-0. Up high. There was no run game by post-77 last night, well, aside from a seventh inning walk down to second base. That was about it. Slight lead for Grover. There's a strike. Two and one. Ball led by head coach Kyle Gaff. Ashland led by head coach Jake Obin. Coach Obin in his first year. Hornung gets a piece of this one left side to the fence, and that's going to go off the fence. Here comes Grover over to third. The throw in is cut off, and it's going to be two in scoring position with one out. A double for Hornung. That was nearly out of the ballpark. Uh, hit that one down the line to 325 mark. Tom Cavanaugh will step in. Not a cheapie by any stretch of the imagination. Tom pitched a great game last night. See if he can add to the offense. There's a strike. I think patience has got to be the operative word tonight for 77. Right. There's patience at the plate. Good discipline. Crowley deals. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. Dom didn't like it. I don't think I liked it either. Anyhow, the count's 0-2. Taking advantage of men on bases was pretty difficult for post 77 last night. We'll see if they can change that tonight outside. That's a good call by Dale. Steve, as an umpire, do you have to get your eyes tested before every season? No. Okay. I always wanted to ask that question of an umpire. <laughs> How many fingers I got? Never mind. Two. Two. All right. Here's the one, two. Gets a piece of this one. That's a rope into left field. One run is in to score. Here comes Hornung around third. He will score as well. And it's 2 nothing. post 77. A two RBI single for Dom Cavanaugh. Uh-oh. The way Jackson slowed up within three but feet of home plate two. and stomped Correction on it. 15, I don't know whether the muggle dugout's going to like that, but the catcher DeRoma didn't see it. Did you spot that, Steve? The emphasis. We were looking right at it. I, I sure did spot that. <laughs> well, I, I asked you how many fingers I had up. And you said two, and it was actually one. Sean Jewett will step in. <laughs> two runs in, four post 77. And just like that, it's a 2 nothing ball game. Well, they do have Paris available. Lives in Canada during the winter. Ooh, inside. Ooh, inside. He was willing to take that one. Yeah. He's got another D. No problem. Here's the 1 0. Gets a piece of this one. Hit high in the air. Left side to the fence. It is caught. And that is a long out for Jewett. Didn't have his Wheaties this morning. Came up a little bit short. Cole Glassburn will step in. The second baseman that was about a 324 Glassburn. foot out. Yeah, certainly was. Not for lack of trying. Uh, well, should have had his breakfast. Cole Sunday night's hero, well, hero, excuse me, with a suicide squeeze. He closed the game out. Wind up and the pitch outside. Full outfield shading cold to left field. Wind up and the pitch. It's inside, gets away from the catcher. Runner stays put at first. Well, Cole's got a gap. Oops, excuse me, I didn't mean to step That's on okay. I was just going to say Cole's got a gap in right center to hit. 
Glasper in a 375 average, 412 on base percentage. He has scored five, or driven in five, scored eight. T late time granted. It's unfortunate because that would have been ball three. Well, Cole called it. The ump gave it to him. And he doesn't have to grant him time. That's right. It's up to him to, to do that or not do it. Outside. Three and O. Oh. Looks like Lowell's giving Cole Glasper in the lines. Both outfielders, left and right, are way off the foul line. See if that comes into play. Wind up and the pitch. Strike one. Interesting defensive alignment they're putting on. Yeah, they haven't squeezed a bit in the outfield, so they don't think he's going to lace one down to the left. They don't think he's going to pull one down to right. Swing and a miss. Full count. Swung up all four right there. Yes, true that. I really don't like these elimination games, Steve. Somebody's going to go home. <laughs> Wind up in the pitch. There's ball four. Two on, two outs, two in. The first baseman number 34, Alex Amalfi. Alex Amalfi will step in. Well, Larry, I think these games bring out the best. In me or in the players? In the players. Okay. You know, as they say in... Professional sports, the two best words are game seven. That, that's what this is. The winner's moving on. The loser is going home. So, Oh, I thought it was the cream always rises to the top. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Alex Amalfi has been pushed down in the order. A good hitter, but of late been struggling. 217 overall, 357 on base percentage. It's deceptive. He's a better hitter than that. He just yeah, certainly is struggling a little bit. Well, sometimes moving around in the batting order is how you break out of that struggle. Take some pressure off him. Pretty significant lead for Glassburn over at first. Leg lift and the pitch, breaking pitch in there for a strike. Hassett playing behind Cole, and uh, seems to be a sun issue with a runner at second base. He's moved into the shade. The 0-1. Strike two. Well, how about that situation last night where the lights went out on a 0-2 count, two outs? In the bottom of the seventh. Uh, I read that about I read about that in the paper. There's a lot of conspiracy theorists <laughs> out there. <laughs> JFK assassination and those types of people. It's actually me. I pulled the plug. Huh? Outside. Yeah, Steve. With uh, two strikes on Brandon Grove, and the lights just went out. Well, there there was a rumor that you were seen right near the electrical box. Uh, that's that's what I heard, Larry. I stuck my finger in the ten thousand volt. Uh, <laughs> Two pitch from Crowley to Amalfi. Time called. You recall the game down at the uh, middle, middle school where Lowell puts that inside move with the shortstop sneaking in behind the runner? And this is hitting the air foul. They put that on Cole Glasper on uh, Saturday, was it, Tom? And they were successful. Yes. And uh, Coach Ogre was thrilled about it. Was it I'm Friday? sure Cole was none too pleased with yeah. himself over that. No. But they work on it. Post 77. And that's how on. you get good at it. Yep. Malfi hit a 250 for Ashland High School this season. A pitch outside. Yeah, Larry, there's a lot of teams who tried that move, but there's not a ton who are actually good at it. Right. Lowell's good at it. Yeah, it really takes a lot of practice. You really have to perfect it. Crowley's set to deal. 
Wind up in the pitch. Hit high in the air, left side. Third baseman says he's got it, and he does. And he will make the catch for the third out, but not before post 77 plates a pair. It's two to nothing as we head to the top of the second on the Ashen Legion Baseball Network. Top of the second inning, six, seven, and eight do up for Lowell Post 87. Tyler Hoey, Johnny Donovan, and Aiden Boyle. The third baseman. To face Luke Gustafson, who now has a two to nothing lead. This kid, Hoey, pitched a good game on Sunday. <laughs> There's a strike. A little outside on that pitch, one and one. Hoey played for North Andover, state champs this year. Gets a piece of this one, and that'll drop into center field. One on with no outs. The designated hitter number seven. That'll bring up Johnny Donovan, Donovan the DH. I think the Red Sox pick, a draft pick, came out of North Andover. Sebastian, Sebastian Kane or Sebastian Kane? Yes, that is correct. Flamethrower. He deals. There's a strike. Because he pitched in the first game of the Super 8 against Franklin and, of course, beat Franklin in that one. I think that was a couple of days after he was drafted. Wind up and the pitch, and this is up the middle, picked up by Glassberg, throw to second for one, throw to first, and they double him up, 4 6 3. Nicely done by Glassburn and Hornung. Aiden Foyle will step in. That was Taylor made. Taylor made. Everything's going right for 77 so far. What I don't know. I'm saying Jinxon, but. Wind up in the pitch. Fouled away. Oh, and one. Gustafson delivers, and this is going to take a couple hops up the middle, picked up by Hornung as he barehands it to first, and it pulled Amalfi off the bag just a tad. Just a little bit of daylight on Alex Amalfi's foot. So one on, two outs, Luke Silva to the plate. The second baseman, number two, Luke Silva. Yeah, this kid's trouble. He was on base, I think, three times last night. He's just a pest, an overall pest. Second baseman. Outside. Pitch count may come into play here. Gossipson deals. A little high. You know the pitch count rules, right? Steve? Oh, I know all about that from the state tournament two years ago. Okay. Four days rest over 80 pitches, right? Wind up and the pitch. Up high, three and oh. So if post 77 does make it to Milford, they'll probably start Alex Amalfi against Shrewsbury. Got to get there first. Got to get there first, I understand. There's the 3 0. Strike one. But if Luke goes past 79 pitches, he needs four days of rest. Here's the 3-1 pitch. And this is up the middle and bobbled by Hornung, everyone's safe. That would, that would have been a very difficult play to make anyhow. Two on, two outs. Edgar Velasquez will come to the plate. He's got the shades on, Jackson does. So a day is 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's the definition of a day in baseball world. I was up all night doing research. Wind up and the pitch. 
There's a strike. The 0 1 pitch fouled away. Velasquez grounded out back in the first inning. Rumor has it that the Velasquez boys have been scouted by some pretty big college programs, and they're only sophomores. Well, this is rumor. This is rumor. I heard it last night. They're certainly very talented players. Somebody mentioned Purdue. Really? Yeah. The O2. Hit up the middle and caught. For the third out of the inning, we will head to the bottom of the second. It's a 2 nothing post-77 lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the second inning, 8, 9, and 1 due up for post-77. A 2 nothing lead for Ashland. Drew Rancatori, Nick Calabrese, and Sam Farrell to face Pat Crowley. Drew's a dead pull hitter. So, I'm not going to warn the right fielder or anything, but. Take strike one there. We saw enough of him over the high school season. His batting average keeps jumping up. Now at a 133. Of course, he was dealing with injuries throughout much of the Legion season. Jake's got a lot of confidence in him. Otherwise, he wouldn't put him in the lineup. And he certainly should. Gets a piece of this one, left side, foul. One and two. <laughs> the umpire trying to save the outfielder a run there. Ooh, glitcher. Let him run. Let him run. <laughs> Here's the one, two. A little high. Daroma behind the plates trying to frame for the umpire and the ump's not buying it, Steve. They're such obvious yanks. The 2-2 gets a piece of this one and it's going to drop into right field. Rankatori is safely aboard with a single. A little upset with him. Uh, just said he's a dead pull hitter. He hits one in the gap. <laughs> The Calabrese will step in. He said that to spite you last. Yeah, I know it. Calabrese, a good bunter. 273 average, 385 on base percentage. Drew dealing with that hamstring injury. Outside, the catcher turns towards hey, first. Catch. He's not going anywhere. Calabrese has scored six and driven in six. Tim Balowitz and Glassburn are the best bunners on the team. Wind up and the pitch. A little outside, says the home plate umpire. I must say, I love uh, the volume of this home plate umpire. He's saying these balls and strikes very clearly. Yeah, unlike uh, Saturday today? That's right. Oh, I'm not going to say anything. Two and O oh is the count. No outs in the inning. Lankatori on first. Bottom of the second, two nothing post 77. Winner of this game advances to the state tournament over at Fino Field in Milford. Where they will play 10 a.m. against Shrewsbury. That pitch was up high, three and O. Oh. Now Crowley's having a little trouble finding the plate. It's all right. Another ball will be just fine. Sam Farrell on deck. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. Three and one. Just a slight advantage, Lowell having that third base dugout, so Jake Obed can communicate with his team. Crowley deals, and this is hit in the air, left side, and foul. Full count. Uh, 
Oh, got to give Glitcher uh, credit for hustle. Yeah, I guess Shear does have good hustle out there. Wind up and the pitch. This is hit high in the air, right field, and it is caught by Aiden Foyle, one away. Rancatori remains at first. Foyle dropped his glove for a second. Is that right? He get rid of the ball. Sam Farrell will step in. Farrell went 0 for 4 yesterday. And a tough day at the plate for Sammy. There's a strike. How was your drive over here, Steve? All right? Smooth. Smooth. Route 9 from Chestnut Hill was a horror show. Route 27 from Norwood. Smooth sailing. There's your traffic report. <laughs> and he'll get a piece of this one. Left side, foul territory. The third baseman trying to run it down. And he'll get there, but won't make the catch. Count remain. Count is now 0 and 2. No, Not for lack of trying. Yeah. yeah, certainly some good effort there by... Ashland oh, fans weren't going to help him. You think? No, absolutely not. No love lost between these two ball clubs. None whatsoever. Lowell sent post-77 home last year at Alumni Stadium. Tom and I were there. He doesn't want to talk about it. Well, post-77 sent Lowell home the year before that. That's true. And now one of these teams will send each other home again. Outside. Oh, that was a close pitch. Carly wanted that one. One and two is the count. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit high in the air, left side out of play. We were fortunate we didn't have to go to Alumni Stadium this year to pay Lowell. They had field problems. So they had to play two games at uh, Ashland's lovely middle school field. Tongue firmly implanted in cheek. The one, two. Farrell gets a piece of this one, hit up the left side, and it is a fair ball and caught. Two away. Who caught it? That was Zach Gishier making the catch. Or as Larry would call him, Zach Glitcher. Brandon Grover will step The way step it's in. written down for me. Just pronounce it the way I see it, that's all. One on, two outs. A two nothing lead, four post 77. Here in the bottom of the second. Wind up and the pitch. A little high there. Grover had a single in the first inning and scored a run as part of that two RBI single hit by Dom Cavanaugh. He hit a four for the four night the other night. And he'll get a piece of this one to center field and caught. Edgar Velasquez is there to make the catch for the third out of the inning. We'll head to the top of the third. Ashland 2, all nothing on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the third inning, a 2 nothing lead, four post 77. 2, 3, and 4 do up for Lowell. Thomas Hassett, Ray Velasquez, and Zach Gishier. <laughs> You're doing that just to get me, uh, get under my skin. Gustafson set to deliver. <coughs> and this is hit in the air to center field and caught by Brandon Grover, who was playing deep, and it paid off there. Nothing but a long out for Thomas Hass. The shortstop number one, Ray Velasquez. Ray Velasquez will step in. Was it him or his brother Edgar closing out last night's game, Tom? That was indeed Ray. Ray Ray? And he 
did a nice job in that inning he had to work. There's a strike. Nice breaking pitch by Luke Gustafson. Lights starting to come on here at Mahan Field. The 0 1 is low. 1 and 1. One thing about Luke Gustafson, he's not very animated out there. He's just all business. He certainly is. He's not here to mess around. No. Catch it, throw it type pitcher. Wind up in the pitch, and this is hit in the air to center field and caught by Brandon Grover, two away. Brandon Grover getting the action here in this third inning. Number 29, Zach Gitchin. Rookie manager Jake Obed would like a very quick inning from Luke Gustafson. Zach Gitch here will step in. <coughs> you know who he reminds me of? <laughs> no, Larry, I don't. Steve, do you know who he reminds me of? No. I'll tell you next half inning. The 1 0. Breaking pitch and therefore a strike. Nasty drop on that breaking pitch. All right, he reminds me of a, a movie character. The guy from Slapshot. Yes. <laughs> this is going to take a couple hops on the infield grass. Picked up by Hornick. Throw to first and not in time. The speedy. Gitchier beats it out, two out single. Kyle DeRoma will step in. That was close. The catcher number 33, Kyle DeRoma. Well, that's not an insult to Gitchier because, Gitchier, excuse me. Slapshot was one of the best sports movies ever, of all time. It's better than the Mighty Ducks. Yes, better than that, Bad News Bears. All those movies. Line up and the pitch. Breaking ball in there for a strike. <coughs> Gustafson looks at first and deals. Swing and a miss. Got away from Sean Jewett for just a second. He pounced on it quick. Ashley will have three, four, and five up in there, half of the inning. There's the 0-2, and this is a foul ball. Good thing that it was foul. Kavanaugh not able to get the glove on it. The 0-2, breaking pitch a little high there, one and two. <coughs> one, two, outside. Two and two. Bit of a lead for Gisher at first as this is hit up the middle and that'll get into center field. <coughs> Two out single for DeRoma. And now Gisher trying to advance a third to throw over and he is able to advance and now DeRoma up to second. <coughs> well, maybe Grover took a little bit too much time to get it in. And now Tyler Hoey will come up with two in scoring position. Number 13, Tyler Hoey. He went down to grab the ball. I think he took his eye off for a second and <coughs> tapped off his glove. And your buddy over there grabbed third base. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I was trying to get a rule. Two on, two outs. I'll probably want to Up high. Tom was nice enough to send me a photo of his dinner. Coach Ovid would like to talk to Luke. Well, Gustafson certainly not an overpowering pitcher, but knows how to work the corners and has some nasty movement on his breaking pitches. But this little lineup certainly 
Not too easy to deal with. A one and oh count on Hoey. Oh, you got to look at the rating. Oh, he was out of the lineup yesterday. An 8.1 is a very good rating for a slice of pizza. Yeah, it was pretty good. Up high. Thought Luke had settled down in the second inning, and he's having trouble right now finding the plate. Upstairs, 3 and 0. Walk here would load the bases. Takes a look at third and deals. There's a strike. Here's an umpire question for you, Steve, after Luke delivers this pitch. The 3-1. Hit high in the air, right side, and it is nearly caught, running into the fence, trying to make the catch was Calabrese. No help from the Lowell fans down there. Overran it. Yeah. That's all there is to it. No help down there. Full no courtesy. That's not fair. So here's the question. Last, Let's hear it. Last night, it was a 3 0 count. We were counting pitches. Wind up in the pitch, fouled away. The Lowell team decided to give an intentional pass. Do you count that intentional pass as a, a pitch or a non-pitch for pitch count purposes? Stump the ump. Is That's a great question. Brought to you by. <laughs> See, I think it used to be counted when you actually had to throw it. And this is going to be off of Kavanaugh into center field. One run is in. Here comes the game tying run, two to two. A big error there. I give him a big hit. What do you think? Kavanaugh kicked the ball into the outfield. So maybe a hit, then an error. Designated hit number seven, Johnny Donovan. But it's a two to two game. Now Johnny Donovan will step in. Swing and a miss. The weird ricochet. I don't know whether it got up, went up Dom's knee, over towards Jackson Horn on. Fouled away. Awful quiet Ashland dugout. Well, they certainly should be after that. Momentum killer. Hit high in the air, over to right center, and it's caught for the third out. Balola has tied up the game. It's two to two as we head to the bottom of the third on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the third inning in post 77 will certainly need some offense now. After Lowell ties up the game at two. Jackson Hornung, Dom Cavanaugh, Sean Jewett do up this inning. Pat Crowley pitching very well for Lowell up to this point. Or at least last inning he did. The first inning not so much, but last inning he was pretty lights out. Win no factor tonight. Right. Down low. Well, that last inning, I don't know. That post-77 defense. Poorest defense. Yeah, they looked... That stuff will not win championships. Nope, I'm sorry, but it won't. Certainly won't. There's a strike, two and one. There aren't too many ballparks around Legion Ball anyway that can hold Jackson Horn on. He gets a hold of one. And this is hit in the air, left side. And that's a fair ball. And is that out of here? Ground rule double. Ground rule double. Jackson Horn with the ground rule double. That's just what the doctor ordered, 4-post-77. 
Yeah, so on that one, that actually bounced first on the dirt, then bounced on the top of the fence, and finally over for a ground rule double. Now Dom Cavanaugh will step in. Hornung is two for two with a pair of doubles. Two hard hit balls, and they're going to intentionally walk. Dom Cavanaugh. So again, does that count as four pitches on his fit, a pitch count? I don't believe it does. I would be very surprised if it does. Well, we get the commissioner in house. Maybe he knows. Runners on first and second. Sean Jewett at the plate. Huge opportunity here for the catcher. They're suspecting a bunt. Hassett is playing way in at first base. The catcher number 15, Sean Jewett. Pat Crowley taking his time. Looks at second. The bunt is down the third base line. Hassett will have a real difficult time backpedaling to first base. Wind up and the pitch. Hit high in the air, right side behind the plate, and it is dropped by the catcher, oh. Oh. Kyle DeRoma, who gave it all he had. Tough break. Oh and one. Sean Jewett, I'm sure glad that his opposite number there uh, dropped that ball. He's got another life. Yeah, I think he needs to say patient here, Larry. You said in the first inning that patience was going to be a virtue. Yep. And uh, that wasn't very patient right there. First pitch swinging. Happened last night. Yeah, you have 2-1, no one out. Wait for your pitch. Crowley set to deal. There's a strike. Oh, and two. So what he thought of bunting right now has been taken away. No. Nope. Oh, two. Swing away. Just don't hit a ground ball. There's the oh, two. Down low. Runners stay put. Good stop by DeRoma. I can't tell DeRoma and Johnny Donovan apart, to be honest with you, defensively. The one-two pitch. The runner back to second. Play I'm talking about. They practice it. They're trying to pick Horning off. Didn't work that time. No. The element of surprise. We're knotted at two here in the bottom of the third. Two on no outs for post 77. Jewett's going to pop this one up right side and it is dropped in foul territory. Count remains one and two. Can't call that E9. It's a foul ball, I'm not sure what he's doing over there at third. Thank you. But you can't give the right fielder an error on that one. That was just too difficult to play. I agree. That would have been a tremendous catch if he was able to make it. Crowley would like to have it as a catch, but no such luck. That's a few balls now down that right field line that haven't been grabbed. Missed chances at outs. One for Calabrese. Checking at first, runner back safe. Horning was waiting to see if there was an overthrow. See if he could take off from second. Rarely see that with first and second, and then pick off over at first. Hassett must have snuck in behind Dom. The one, two, up high. Due up next is Cole Glassburn. Right fielder is so far up the line. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Gets a piece of this one. Into left field it goes. That'll drop in. Hornung being waved around. The throw in is going to be cut off. And Hornung puts post 77 back on top. It's a 3-2 ball game. An RBI single for Sean Jewett. Jackson Hornung had no designs on sliding there. It would have been a train wreck if DeRoma stuck out his shoulder. I think he would have got the worst of it. Dom Cavanaugh up to second. 
Now Cole Glassburn will step into the batter's box. Still no outs in the inning. And luckily for all involved on that play, the throw was not on target. Yeah. So if it was, that would have been a lot more interesting, but it's off the line anyway. Coach Gath wants a word with Crowley. I wonder what the leash will be on him. Great at bat there by Sean Jewett. He gets that second chance on that non-catch down the right field line, and he makes the most of it. Yeah, just over the glove of Velasquez. Yep. You know, Larry, that's what good players do. Yep. Well, it's twice tonight I think Jewett has had a shot over Velasquez. Yes, although the first one was a fly to left. Well, that, that, that ball was stung. So Last bad. Glassburn will step in. He walked his last time up back in the first inning. Well, if they have any memories of Sunday night, they know what he did. You all can see that on HCAM highlights. Suicide squeeze. Wind up in the pitch. Gets a piece of this one into right field. That'll drop down. Lead runner Kavanaugh is going to stay at third. It's going to be bases loaded with no outs. Good back up by Crowley. Certainly Did his was. job. Good throw in by the first Foyle. Baseman, number 34, Alex Amalfi. Alex Amalfi will step in. Bases loaded, no outs. Post 77, back on top, three to two. It's been a pretty action-packed three innings. Yeah, but there's no been no movement in the. Well, I see a little movement out of post 87s dugout. That may be. John Perry. And that's who it is, 22. Crowley working from the stretch. Corner infielders playing in. There's a strike. Oh, Lowell's playing for a double play up the middle and they will go home on ground balls hit to the corners. The 0-1. Down low. Malfi had four walks this season, four post 77. Hit a 217. Outside, 357 on base percentage. Bases loaded, no outs, a three to two post 77 lead. Crowley set to deal, swing and a miss. Two and two. Drew Rankatori do up next. Alex missed that by a lot. Lots of room on the right side of the field. Here's the 2-2. Fouled into the backstop. Kavanaugh at third, Jewett at second, Glassburn at first, Amalfi at the plate. Even a little dribbler on the ground will score a run. Crowley deals. And get, he'll get a piece of this up to the third baseman to throw home. They get one, so they will prevent the run from scoring. So Melfi reaches on the five to two four so one away. Drew Rancatori will step in. Yep, good defense. Yep. Well, I don't think you get to this point unless you have defense like that. Yeah, and the right fielder is playing right where he hit it last time. So, but I still say he's a dead pull hitter. Rancatori singled last inning. Ball one. So 
it's now Jewett at third, Glassburn at second, Amalfi at first. Wind up and the pitch. Outside. Two Curry and toiling down in the bullpen in right field. A walk would score a run. He deals. Inside. Three and O. Oh. Furankatori hall. No, no. Remember oh, last yeah. night. No. <laughs> have to hold it. That's the conversation that Jake Obid and Drew Rancatori are having right now. Patience. Take. <laughs> He's throwing three straight balls. Patience. Look at that right field position. If our camera man can get a shot of the right fielder. 3-0 pitch. Checking at first. Runner back safe. <laughs> a little chirping out of the 77 dugout. <laughs> they were quiet for a while. A 3-0 count to the hitter, and you worried about the man at first? Priorities, huh? Well, I, I agree. There it is. Strike one. There wasn't even a muscle twitch there. Three one probably has the green light here. Yeah, I think so. I still wouldn't swing. Probably the message was if you swing at this pitch, I'll murder you. And he will swing. Popped up foul, full count. Drew's a really good fastball hitter, so I don't expect him to have something blown by him. Nick Calabrese do up next. Fouled into the backstop. Rankatori stays alive. Will he put together a 13 pitch Brandon Grove right back, Tom? He might. That was incredible last night. Sunday, Sunday. Getting the days of the week mixed up. Oh no, last night there was a good at bat too. I believe it was Grover. Oh, gee. Curl one down the line. Hit in the air. Foul, and that is popped up behind home plate, and it is tr not caught by DeRoma. Those are always the toughest catcher. Got that backspin. He had his back turned towards home plate like he should have. Although he did get a slight assist, he was bumped by the home plate umpire. It's his job. <laughs> yeah, there's no umpire who likes to do it. Unfortunately, it does happen from time to time. Hey, another life. It's just a fact of umpire and then another life here. Now Drew Rancatori's got to do his job. Poke one down the line. Fouled away, count remains full. Well, this is quite the late appearance here by Drew Rancatori. The Legion's a little poor right now. The umpire wants some more ammo. Well, this field is pretty forgiving with foul balls, I must admit. Yeah, there's some, you have a foul ball, it's never coming back. An Ashland, oh God. Third baseline. <laughs> Good luck. I think it was last game we found the old scoreboard, the electronic scoreboard in the woods. Yes, yeah, the first appearance that's made in 40 years. I think it's run by electricity. <laughs> Are you sure about that? I think so. Payoff pitch. Once again. 
And he'll rip this up the first baseline, and that is going to be a hit for Regatory. One run is in. Here comes another run, and two are going to score for post 77. It's a 5 2 ball game. A two RBI single for Drew Regatory. That ball had eyes for that foul line. Jewett is in. Glassburn is in. Amalfi up to third. What's Still only one do? out. Right number 19, Nick Calabrese. 5 2, post 77. Nick Calabrese will step in. Drew Rankatori ripping it up the first baseline. And that's now two missed catches. That leads to uh, two run scoring at bats. Yeah. Two missed chances there for Lowell. Well, Drew Rankatori, dead pole hitter, did his job. And this is up the middle. Takes a couple hops. Picked up by the second baseman. Throw to second for one. Now over to first. They'll only get one. And another run scores. Alex Amalfi's in. So a RBI for Nick Calabrese who reaches on the fielder's choice. We got a pinch hitter. Sam Farrell will... Step in. I don't oh, think so. Oh, the umps might talk about it here. And actually, we do have a pinch hitter. It's Kevin Balowitz. The umps are going to chat here. I don't know. What about? About the slide or lack thereof. Well, I guess. Uh, and in that case, Bob Dwyer would defer to the home plate umpire. He probably had a better view in real time of that. Doesn't look like he's going to They could be turn. arguing if the guy was safe at first. No, no. no. I think it's bad news for Lowell. You read body language, Steve? Well, obviously, the players aren't too happy. They say know the rule, although I'm pretty sure the umpires do know the rules. You know, they wouldn't be wearing that patch otherwise, but well, it's again, it's a judgment call. One okay. bite, everybody knows the rules. Uh, uh, right, and you know, there's a thousand umpires here, right, Larry? That's so, right. but you know what? There's only two opinions that matter. Bob Dwyer did the right thing by checking with his partner at home plate. He would have had a clear, clear view of it, so and then the ruling on the field stands. Ruling on the field stands. And the organist is playing the music <laughs> for Jeopardy. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> That's a great job by the uh, music guy here at Mahan Stadium. So Kevin Balowitz is stepping in for Sam Farrell. Should get a raise. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Now pinch hitting is number 26, Kevin Balowitz. So it is a runner on first, two outs, Balowitz at the plate. Takes a strike, a six to two lead, four post 77, four runs have scored in this third inning. All the pressure will now be on Lowell's bats. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike, 0 and two. One well, of the few breaking pitches Crowley's thrown today. This has been a pretty long three innings, guys. Hour 20 minutes into it already. Rob Manfred would not be happy with this. Uh, not a snooze fest, though. Certainly isn't. Balowitz fouls that into the backstop. Excuse me, may I interrupt you for a second, Tom? Who is Balowitz pinch hitting for? Sam Farrell. Sam Farrell. All right, gotcha. Might see Balowitz take over in center field. Or somewhere else on the diamond. Wind up in the pitch. Check swing, he held runner from first taking off, and he's out. So that was Calabrese who was caught stealing. And we will head to the top of the fourth post 77 with a 6 to 2 lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fourth inning, a 6-2 to two lead for post-77. They played four runs in the bottom of the third. 
And it appears we have a pinch hitter for Lowell. No, it's not, he's wearing the wrong jersey. Oh, he's wearing the wrong jersey. Okay, so Aiden Foyle will step in. He's wearing number 10 today. The right fielder, number five, wearing number 10, Aiden Foyle. <laughs> yeah, nice job by Matt Lodi addressing the jersey concerns there. To recap the bottom of the third, Jackson Hornung started off with a double. Dom Cavanaugh was then intentionally walked. Sean Jewett with an RBI single to score Hornung. Uh, Glassburn had a single as well. That would put two on the base at that time. And then Amalfi reached on a force out at home plate as the first pitch to foil his ball one. And then a two RBI single scored Jewett and Glassburn. And then Nick Calabrese reached on a fielder's choice and drove in another run. There is a strike, one and one. We're in the top of the fourth inning, a six to two ball game. With Luke uh, out there, he's missing. He's missing in the outside part of the plate. Can't seem to nibble there. And this is up the middle, takes a couple hops on the grass, a very slow roller picked up by Kavanaugh, he, and he doesn't have a play on it. Stick Aiden a fork at it. Aiden so Foyle reaches. Well, uh, Lowell has made good contact today. Eight hits on the day for Lowell. Uh, wipe the blood off that baseball. Luke Silva will step in. This kid's a pest. He's probably a nice kid in real life, but baseball fans is a pest. Up high. Silva singled at his only plate appearance back in the second inning. Outside. You don't want to lose a nine hitter. He's just not getting that outside corner. Checking at first, runner back safe. Two and oh is the count. Pitch is up high, three straight balls from Gustafson. Are we on a seven second delay, Tom? I thought I heard uh, your voice. Just in case I. Testing out the live feed. Oh, okay. Multitasking. There's a strike. Get me over fastball. Three and one is the count. Fouled into the backstop. Now with two strikes, he definitely doesn't want to lose Silva, right, Tom? That's right. Work that hard to get the count to 3-2. Gustafson has uncharacteristically struggled a little bit in this game. Wind up in the pitch. Hit high in the air, right side. Calabrese racing over and will make the catch. And the runner will retreat back to first. They nearly doubled him up. The One away. Edgar Velasquez, the center fielder, will step in. Velasquez is 0 for 2 today. Gustafson from the stretch. There's a strike. Put a little extra on there, and he got to the plate quick, lifted his leg, and drove towards home plate. The 0 1. Breaking pitch. And it gets away from Jewett. Runner taking off, and they don't got him. Wow. I don't know about that. Jewett went around the back, it looks like because the throw was offline and put the tag on it, but he was in there safe. I think he slid right under that. Stolen base for Foyle. Was not a drop tag. 
Nope. Nope. If I'm calling that from here, I'm calling that safe as well. All right, call it. Go ahead. <laughs> safe. All right. The 1-1. One, one. And that's fouled away. One and two. No warm-up action for post 77. That means he's going the buck five. That's the pitch limit in American Legion, 105 pitches. Check it at second. That goes off the runner. Glassburn picks it up. Not practicing that play. I don't know whether that was a good idea. You don't think they practiced it? No, I really don't. I haven't seen it all year. And this is hit in the air, left side, and a dive, and a catch! Wow, what a catch there Kevin Ballowitz. by Kevin Balowitz. In for Sam Farrell with a tremendous catch. Well, doesn't have as nice a derriere as Farrell, but he got the job done. That was fan voting, by the way, Steve. Now that's some great defense right there. Yeah, It certainly Web is. Web gem. That was a run-saving play. Has it at the plate, takes ball one. Two outs, runner on second. Post 77 trying to hang on to a six to two lead here in the top of the fourth. Gustafson looks at second and deals, swing and a miss. Ooh, feel that up here, feel the breeze. I think we have a reporter from the Lowell Sun in here. Maybe he goes out the window if Lowell wins. What do you think? Long, long way down. <laughs> the 1-1. One, one. And this takes a couple hops on the infield. Grass picked up by Glassburn. Throw to first. No problem. Four to three. Four out number three. And we will head to the bottom of the fourth. It's Ashland 6, Lowell 2. It's the Zone 5 championship game on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fourth inning, Kevin Balowitz will step to the plate. He was at the plate to end last inning. Nick Calabrese ended the bottom of the third as he was caught stealing. A 6-2 to two lead for post 77. There is a new pitcher for Lowell. Brock Pear in the game to take over for Pat Crowley. Crowley pitched three innings, giving up six earned runs and seven hits. Fouled away. 0-1 oh, on Balowitz, who made a tremendous catch uh, what was in the top about? of the inning. Jerome threw the ball back to Pear. Almost went in his, right in his kisser, right over his head. Balowitz hit a 353 during the Legion season, 429 on base percentage. And although Farrell has done very well defensively, Balowitz might have just stole his job. That catch, I'd say so. And with the way he's been hitting the ball. And he'll get a piece of this one. Slow roller picked up by the shortstop. Throw to first is high, and Balowitz is safe. That goes into the crowd, and he's automatically going to get second base as well. Hope everybody's okay down the first baseline. Edgar <laughs> Velasquez, or uh, excuse me, Ray Velasquez. A little too much on that one. Did you say Hector Velasquez? <laughs> I said Edgar. He has the Red Sox on his mind, Larry. I know. So a down to Pawtucket. I'm giving that a single and an error. Oh, I'm going to go e, e six, six the whole way on that. The whole way. All right. E, e, e six. Brandon Grover will step in. What a way to start for Perry. I mean, mm. pair. That throw was so strong that could have landed over on the football field. Yeah. As soon as he threw that, I said, Yeah, ah, yeah. You, you just had a feeling. Going? Yeah. Airmail. Yeah, special delivery. Here it comes. <laughs> I think that was an anger throw. Still angry over that non-call last inning, perhaps? Well, that sort of, you know, Jackson Horning made a similar throw uh, several games ago. That is true. One of the worst plays he's ever made in his entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I said as much. 
<laughs> Grover gets a piece of this one. It's foul. Honest Larry over here. Well, you saw it, didn't you? I did. Uh, 20 feet over. Which game was it? Uh, Last week? It was at Ashley Middle School. It's rear back and... I forget what game that was, but I know what you're talking about. Up high. It's the Hudson game. Ah. Weird things tend to happen in Ashland Hudson games this year. Yeah. The 1 1. Runner on second, no outs. A 6 to 2 post 77 lead as this is hit very high in the air. Left side, battling the lights, making the catch is Zach Ishier. Runner stays put at second, one away. That'll bring up Jackson Hornung, who's 2 for 2 today with a pair of runs. He's and my offensive star of the game so far. How about you? Well, you know what? Just to play devil's advocate, yes, I'll throw Drew Rankatori into the mix. Well, yeah. A single, a two RBI single. But yeah, Jackson Horning has just tattooed the ball today. We'll see if he continues it here. Intentional the, walk. The four fingered salute they give him. The third base Different from the one fingered salute. Cavanaugh. Second intentional walk of the game by Lowell. They Walked Kavanaugh last inning. So it's first and second, one out. Dom Kavanaugh steps in now. Well, the first time they did that, it backfired. It didn't work. We'll see if this one works. Brock Pear set to deal. In there for a strike. He's got a pretty good hose, Pear. Got long legs, too. Not sure why he didn't start today's game. And this is up the middle, off the glove of Pear, picked up by the second baseman. We'll step on second for one, the throw to first, and he's in time. A 4-3 to three double play to retire the side in the bottom of the fourth. To the top of the fifth we go, post-77 leading Lowell 6-2 to two on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fifth inning, three, four, and five to up. Ray Velasquez, Zach Gishier, Kyle DeRoma, Luke Gustafson in the game. Pitched very well last inning. And he's pitched pretty well overall against a very tough low lineup. He's given up eight hits and two runs so far. To be fair, we've seen him sharper. Oh, we certainly have. You know, Gustafson, he's not the most overpowering pitcher, but he's a guy that is just known to throw many different kinds of pitches at you and have you fooled. And the umpire uh, adjusting his face mask, the home plate hump. So a official's delay here at Mahan Field in Natick. A 6-2 lead, four posts, 77, can, three, four, and five do up for Can we Lowell. get the, some music to play? Ray Velasquez, Zach Gishier, and Kyle DeRoma do up. And Lowell certainly has to get some offense going if they want to get back into this game. <laughs> Post 77 scored four runs in the bottom music. of the third. And now it seems like the home plate umpire ready to rock. Then expose his throat. Took the throat guard off. I think one of the straps broke. And obviously that thing is useless with only one, one strap. <laughs> Knowing from experience, I've had that happen to me. He's got his cup on. <laughs> well, come on, Larry. I would hope so, right? Well, that brings me to my next question. That low. Do base umpires wear uh, protectors? No. Okay. Although sometimes if you're doing a twin bill and you don't have a lot of time to uh, change and stuff, then you keep it on. Slightly high. Great question, though, Larry. Uh, thanks. What's up last night? <laughs> Late. The 2-0 outside. Want to keep Velasquez off base if you can. Well, I'm sure at this point if Velasquez ends up on first, it will certainly be a steal attempt. There's a strike. Three one, swing and a miss, full count. Wow, that fooled Velasquez. The 
bad hack. The payoff pitch, time called. Now, if somebody was in California tuning into this station, could they hear us? They could hear Steve and I, but not you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wind up and the pitch. Yeah. There's a nasty pitch for strike three. One away. Yeah. Back in the dugout. Grab some pine. And it is pine in there. I'll we'll bring up Zach no. Gish here. Nicely stained pine. Yeah. He wasn't too happy about it, but strike three. Yeah. Got a swing in that situation. That's all there is to it. Wind up in the pitch. Down low. That umpire has a pretty good hoo ha. Not like Tom Hallion. That guy is a nut. In the air for a strike, one and one. You ever seen Tom Hallion from the MLB? It's uh, intense. Yeah. We'll say. The yeah. batters don't like it, <laughs> they give him a look. The one one. Breaking pitch, a little high. Ooh. Two and one. Thought the up was going to raise his right hand. Thought about it. Here's the two one. Outside. Not even close. One out, base is clear. Red Sox had Tom Hallion when they were in Baltimore. He was terrific. He got one of the Red Sox guys out looking. The three one. Swing and a miss. Full count. Well, they had him this weekend and Angel Hernandez behind the plate today in their oh. game. <laughs> best umpire of all time. Yep. And well, he'd tell you he's the best umpire in the world. <laughs> well, he is. He is. Don't you know? He'll sue you. Swing and a miss. Two straight strikeouts for Gustafson. And the whole plate umpire has something to say to Gishier. Kyle DeRoma will step in. Blink and you're gone, says the home plate umpire. So Zach Gishier just got a warning. They catch number 33, Kyle DeRoma. Kyle DeRoma will step in with two outs. What are you listening for, uh, Steve, as an umpire? Everything and anything. You know, it's, it's been scientifically proven that if you're the home plate umpire, your hearing actually improves. Like a bat? Yeah. That's true. Highly evolved ears? Yeah. Fouled away. Well, Larry, I know when I have the plate, I hear every word. So, you can call it rabbit ears, you can call it selective hearing, you can call it whatever you want, but part of your job is to control the game. That's what the home plate umpire is doing. If you let stuff go, then you start to lose control. Ooh, I've heard that statement before, losing control of a game. Oh, didn't we hear that like a million times in, in that game Hudson? in Hudson? Yeah. yeah. This one, umpire, too. Yep. How ironic. One and one. Inside. I think the balls and strikes have been called very well. I agree. Now, the plate umpire told him to come here, and he still turned his back on him, and he didn't toss him out. Oh. Would you have tossed him out? Yes. Over to Hornung, and it's bobbled. Daroma will reach on the error. Took an awkward bounce. Tough play to make, but I'm giving the error. Tyler Hoey will step in. Yeah, when the umpire gives you an order, it's a yes, pretty good sir. idea to follow it. Yes, sir. That's, that's all. Simple. What do you say? You even blink and you're done? Yeah. <laughs> Just remember, guys, uncoachable kids become unemployable adults. Statement holds true all the time. I'm going to put that right in my phone. Hoey gets a piece of this one, hit high in the air over to center field and caught for the third out of the inning. We will head to the bottom of the fifth, post 77 with a 6-2 to two lead over Lowell on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fifth inning, 5, 6, and 7 due up for post 77. Sean Jewett, Cole Glassburn, Alex Amalfi face Brock Pear in his second inning of relief, strike one. Starts Sean off with an off-speed pitch. Been throwing mainly fastballs. That'll make it one and one. 
Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. One and two. No matter how much you know that there's a chain link fence in front of you, the ball comes back, you still flinch. Yep. Hit high in the air, left side foul. Sean Jewett is one for two today. He's flown out and he had an RBI single as part of the four run third inning. Pair delivers, not hit him. Oh, he's gonna stay right there. He said he made no attempt to get out of the way. Steven Simos would have got that call. Yeah, he should have just said I'm just very slow at getting out of the way. Oh, oh boy. Coach Lodi talking to the umpire about something. Not quite sure what this conversation's about. Second major conference. All right, so the local coach was questioning if it was in the strike zone. Because if you lower your body and your arm into the strike zone and it hits you, it could be called a strike, but that's tough to change that call from first base. You, you just can't do it. Right. So it's a two and two count on Jewett. Inside, that sits him down. Some nice cheese right underneath the nose. I think that was a little uh, yeah, warning that... there by the pitcher. I don't know. Swing and a miss, out number one. Yeah. Cole Glasburn will step in. I think post, post 87's dugout just got a little more animated. The second baseman number two, Cole Glasburn. Wind up and the pitch, upstairs. There's a strike. Still low employing that squeeze the outfielder defense. Both lines available for Cole. Two and one is the count. So far, Cole Glassburn has walked and singled and scored a run. And he'll put this one up the right side. Very slow roller, and it's bobbled by the first baseman. The flip, is it in time? No. So Glassburn reaches. Oh, my God. He beat out a hit. The speedy Cole Glassburn Infield races single. up the line and beats it out. Twinkle toes. Alex Amalfi will step in. His high school coach is hanging around, which I think he is. Get out the defibrillator. He beats out ahead. Slow score on the team. Yeah. Right, Larry? He's, he's Speaking of Larry, Lawrence Tang stepping in to pinch hit. Oh, he's a good looking 15 year old. Way bigger than me. That's saying something. <laughs> wow. Height wise. One out single. Uh, one out, <laughs> excuse me, it was a strikeout and a single. So far in this inning, a pitch down low. He plays for the Nakona Club out of Hopkinton. I won't tell you what street he lives on, but it's the name of a tree. <laughs> Good eye, too. Tang hit a 333 this season for Ashen Legion and nine at bats. And it's not Elmer Maple. And he has all kinds of power. We know that. Yeah. Gets a piece of this one, hit very high in the air. Velasquez tracking back to center field, called off by Velasquez. his brother. And Edgar makes the catch two away. The designated hitter number four, Drew Rankatori. Rankatori will step in. The professor. And you wonder who's going to... I think what they'll probably do is move yeah. Rankatori over to first base and get rid of the DH spot. Yeah, I mean, Alex Amalfi's having a tough time of it at the plate. Up high. 
Now, it, Drew's previous at bat, he hit a worm burner right down the first baseline, and they're still playing, still playing 70 feet off the line. I don't get it. Pitch up high, 2 and 0. Oh. Brock Pear has been pretty solid since coming in to relieve Pat Crowley in the fourth inning. He held his swing, but it was a strike anyway. He thought about it. Drew Rancatori has a pair of singles, including a two RBI single as part of that four run third inning. Fouled away. Two and two. Winner of this game moves on to the state tournament at Milford's Fino Field, Saturday, 10 a.m. to take on Shrewsbury, the Zone 4 champions. Wind up and the pitch. Gets a piece of this one and it's foul. And for those of you foodies out there, they have an unbelievable sausage, pepper, and onion sandwich down at Fino Field. And why is that, Larry? Because uh, it's cooked out on a grill. Mm, well, yeah. And it's an Italian sausage. Yeah. And it's on bread. Yeah. It's done just right. Inside. Full count. And my mom is the one who runs that concession stand. No way. She charged me six bucks for that sub. The last <laughs> you got to take that up with her. It said five dollars on the sign. <laughs> Ten for you. I don't blame them for charging you more. And this is hit up the right side, picked up by the first baseman, and he will hobble over to first and step on the bag for the third out. We'll head on to the top of the sixth. Ashland leading Lowell 6-2 to two on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Luke Gustafson out there for another inning for post 77, 78, and 9 new up for Lowell. Johnny Donovan, Aiden Foyle, and Luke Silva. Wow. I think this is going to be Luke's last inning. He's going to face Daddy Long Legs here and next two hitters. There's a strike. 0 oh and 1. Leg lift in the pitch, and that's fouled away. 0 oh and 2. Donovan 0 oh for 2 on the day. Hit into a double play and flew out. More eggs, the umpire wants, more eggs. Slow break of pitch in the outside corner would be nice right now. Here's the 0-2 and it's just outside. Just a little bit outside. 1-2 pitch, fouled away. I see some people I know to my right. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to wave my hat out the window. One, Got two, a nice pitch. Wave back. There you go. Who was it? Anybody interested? That's Josh Fisher, Steve Simos, Ben McKenzie, and the back of somebody's head. Ah. Two and two is the count on Donovan. Some of the Milford Post 59 guys. Post 59. Gustafson gets the sign he likes and deals. Strike three. Believe Long it. whack back to the dugout, right, Steve? You're down by four runs. You need a swing. Believe it or not, that's only the third strikeout of the game for Gustafson. Aiden How many does he have left in the cannon of his? Aiden Foyle will step in. I think he could strike out the rest of the inning. And probably the seventh. These guys are looking at a lot of good pitches. Not sure what they're waiting for. Ball one. One and one. I think Luke knows this is it for him. Either this hitter or the end of the inning. They'll bring in Glassburn. Up high. Two and one is the count. Is 
There's a strike. I'm with you, Steve. What are you waiting for? Pitch right down Broadway. Swing You're down by four runs. Your season's on the line. And you're watching all these great pitches. You go right by you. Fouled away. Yeah. Oh, he must have heard us because that would have been strike three called right there. Oh, yep. Yeah. Would have got the old hoo ha. A little warm up activity down the Ashley and bullpen, but I gotta believe Cole Glassburn will be the first one on the bump. It's Owen Ward getting loose. Wind up in the pitch. There's strike three, two away. We'll bring up Luke Silva. Two admiring hitters. And that's three in the last two half innings here. At a museum for Lowell. There's a strike. And they're just staring at it, Larry. Right. I mean, like I nice, don't get it. Nice piece of artwork. Let's paint that corner. Fouled into the backstop. O and two. One strike away from striking out the side. See what he does with Silva here. Does he give him the gas pipe? The 0 2. Up the middle. Hop on the grass. Picked up by Hornung. Throw to first. Not a problem. 1 2 3. They go in the top of the six to the bottom of the six. We go. It's 6 to 2 Ashland on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. <laughs> Bottom of the sixth inning, 9-1 and 2 due up for Ashland, 077. Nick Calabrese, Kevin Balowitz, and Brendan Grover, the three outfielders. And first pitch is up high. Calabrese has flown out and hit into a fielder's choice that scored a run, so he does have an RBI to his credit. It was part of that four-run third inning. Two and O is the count. <laughs> a couple of insurance runs right here would be nice. Wind up in the pitch. Oh, I don't know about that. Two and one. <laughs> and this is up the right side, into right field it goes. The leadoff single for Calabrese. <laughs> Pair doesn't want to do that with a nine hitter. Balowitz will step in. He of the tremendous defensive play of the game. <laughs> Top 10 material right there. Oh yeah, whip him all the way. Down low. If only we had a show at Zone 5 tonight, have right. all the web gems. Yes. Well, that would be the top one. Oh, absolutely. No question about it. Complete layout. Checking at first, runner back safe. Air almost sailed that out of the ballpark. <laughs> a lot of fans inside this press box. Certainly is. Hit in the air, right side foul. Overflow crowd in the press box. Well, the seating was all full. <laughs> Wind up and the pitch from Pear, and this is up the middle. Hop on the infield grass, barehanded by the second baseman, flip to the shortstop at second oh, for one over to first. I don't think so. What a double play that was. Four, six, three, two away. And the Ashland coach disagrees. I agree with the Ashland coach. Yeah, it was very close. I caught it out of the corner of my eye, so I'm not sure. Yeah. What do you uh, think, Steve? Well, I, I know it, it was just a close call. I know Mr. Dwyer was not happy with him. He probably told him assistant coaches don't have a speaking role. Well, what do you think, out or, out or not? Honestly, it was a close call. If you call him safe, then, yeah, it's just, it's just a close call, you know. Swing and a miss, one and one. As you know, there is no such thing as a tie. It's a no. That, that, well, that's what we call a banger. 
slaying for a bang bang play. Up high. The ball had some spin on it too, so it was a difficult play. The 2 1. Fouled away. 2 and 2. I've got to give Silver and Velasquez some credit. I will say, though, that was a great bare hand. And th th that ball bounced right before it got to him, too. He did well to even grab that. Swing and a miss, and that'll wrap up the sixth inning. We'll head to the top of the seventh. Lowell is down to their final three outs up next on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the seventh inning. Lowell down to their final three outs, trailing six to two. Luke Gustafson still on the mound for post 77. And he has been just sensational, especially over the last three innings. Edgar three. Velasquez, Thomas Hassett, and Ray Velasquez do up top of the order for post 87. Well, it's the trouble part of their order. They're Certainly top is. five. The oh. outside, the home plate umpire says. One and oh. There's a bunt pulled back, two and oh. It's like Drew Rancatori is completely out of the game, right? There's a strike, two and one. No, my bad. Forget it. Wind up and the pitch. There's strike two, two and two. Ah, uh, there was some barking from the uh, dugout. Total bench warning now from the umpire umpire. Well, someone just got thrown out. Hit the parking lot. I love this. It's good television. <laughs> it certainly is. Hit well, the streets, man. And I believe, who's that that got thrown out? Is that, looks like Gishier, or number nine. Somebody said a no-no. He's going to go to the parking lot. There's going to be a forfeit here. That was Chris Ward, I believe, that was thrown out. Good for him. Might as, might as well get his money's worth. And now Coach Kyle Gath having some words with the home plate ump. Well, he's hanging around. He's outside there. Well, he's not supposed to be. No, he's supposed to be in the parking lot, but... Two and two. Hit high in the air, center field, and caught. One away. Brandon Grover with the catch. Going to be it for uh, Luke Gustafson. Thomas Hassett will step in. It looks like maybe the pitch count reached for Gustafson. What a tremendous start it was. He Did went what he six, had to do. Yep. Yeah, went six and a third of an inning. His teammates are going to greet him as he comes off the mound. Big hug from his coach or his manager. High fives from everybody. Went six and a third of an inning, gave up two runs, eight hits, and he struck out. Cole Glassburn looks like he's got the ball in his hand. Struck out four hitters. Great performance by Luke Gustafson. Certainly a pleasure to see him pitch. He of the rubber arm, Cole Glassburn. Ladies so, and gentlemen, your attention please now pitching for Ashland. So we Glassburn. do have Cole Glassburn out there to take over on the mound. Ben Fink will take over at second base. And we'll take a timeout on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Cole Glassburn is now on the mound for post 77. One out in the inning, Luke Gustafson has reached the maximum pitch count after six and a third. First baseman number 23, Thomas Hassett. Thomas Hassett will step in for Lowell. 
that we get to watch the doctor of deception, Cole Glassburn. Hassett knows about the quick pitch. He creamed one off him earlier in the year. Well, in the 3-2 to two loss last night, he pitched two clean innings. There's a strike. Last night he bent over some good curveballs. Threw six out of eight. I hope his girlfriend Myrtle's watching on YouTube. This is hit in the air to left field and caught. Kevin Balowitz with another nice catch. Two away. Ray Velasquez will step in. Low down to their final out. The shortstop number one, Ray Velasquez. Should post-77 prevail, I hope there's good sportsmanship through the handshake line. Wind up and the pitch. Strike one. He's feeling that thing. It's a leftover curveball from last night. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to center field, and that is caught! Brandon Grover with a tremendous catch for the final out. And Ashland Legion post 77 are your zone five champions. Ashland Legion is going to the state tournament where they will play 10 a.m. Fino Field against the zone four champs, Shrewsbury. Ashland Legion post 77 gets the job done. And for the second time in the past three years, they are heading to the state tournament. A six to two final. A tremendous win for post 77. And they may have had a tough loss last night, but they certainly rebounded here today and got a tremendous six to two win over a very good Lowell team. Sweet, sweet revenge from last season. Ashland post 77 heading to the state tournament. Their first game will be against Shrewsbury, 10 a.m. Fino Field in Milford. Great job by rookie manager Jake Obid corralling all these kids into his own championship. It certainly was. And I think it's pretty tremendous to get to the states in your first year at the helm. That is just unbelievable. So Ashland can now call themselves Zone 5 champions. They are moving on to the state tournament as they get the 6-2 to two win over Lowell. I think Coach Obed should get the Gandhi. Well, I think the whole team should get the Gandhi today. But Luke Gustafson was Whoop, a big reason yeah. behind the success here today. Went six and a third, giving up eight hits and two runs. Worked his way out of a lot of battles with this tough low lineup and was just tremendous. And then, of course, you have Jackson Hornung with a pair of doubles and an intentional walk. And then Drew Rancatori, who went one for or two for three at the plate, a pair of singles, including a two RBI single as part of a four-run third inning. But Ashland Legion moving on to the state tournament at Fino Field in Milford. Game one, Saturday morning, 10 a.m. against Shrewsbury. Uh-oh. And there's, there's the Gatorade top right over Coach Obed. And that certainly must feel good. In his first year at the helm, heading to the state tournament. And he gets the well-deserved Gatorade over the head. He had no clue. Well, we got to get down there. Well, they're going to do the Gandhi photo, so we'll keep it right here. And then we're going to get down there, grab some post-game interviews, which you'll be able to see on the highlight package. But for now, we'll wrap it up here from the press box for... Steve Watson and Larry Sacklad, Cameron Tabo on camera. I'm Tom Nappy. The final score for the final time. Ashland Legion moving on to the state tournament with a 6-2 win over Lowell. Post-77 season will continue on. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. 
and we'll see you at the state tournament. Good night, everyone. <laughs>